welcome to the Dean Policini Center on the campus of the Rochester Institute of Technology for RIT Sports Zone's presentation of Tiger Hockey. Tonight, RIT returns to face its throughway rivals from Canisius in the first of a home and home series with the Griffs. Freshman defenseman Adam Brubaker with three points on a goal and an assist last weekend at AIC, earning Atlantic Hockey Defensive Player of the Week honors. For the second time this year, he'll have his work cut out for him this weekend, as will the rest of the Tigers, as the injury bug has hit this team hard. You are watching RIT Sports Zone pregame live, presented by Taylor the Builders. Over the next half hour, we'll have highlights, analysis, live interviews, and much more as we get you set for face-off at 7.05. Good evening, I'm Kevin Roach. Thanks so much for watching RIT Sports Zone pregame live. We welcome our viewers watching online and across the state on Time Warner Cable. Well, the Tigers come into the night shorthanded. RIT will be without their top two defensemen as Brady Norris will miss his fifth consecutive game with an upper body injury. His brother Chase also out this weekend. On the offensive side, Todd Skirving will miss his second straight weekend with a wrist injury. He had a cast on his left hand earlier tonight when I ran into him in the hallway. He is out for a while, gone also this weekend are Ryan Kruper, Alex Perone Fontaine, and Max Makowski. Let's get straight to Sports Zones. Stacy Pension, who's standing by live ringside with the head coach of the Tigers, Wayne Wilson. And Stacy, you know the Tigers facing their first real adversity of the season, but they were in a similar situation a year ago when they were hit with a rash of injuries too, weren't they? Yeah, that's right, Kevin. As you mentioned, joined by head coach Wayne Wilson. The game hasn't even begun yet, and you're already, you know, trying to scratch and claw your way up. A lot of injuries. Can you elaborate on any of them? The Norris twins, Skirving? Yeah, you know, it's, uh, we went from the first half really not having any injuries, maybe Gabriel, Gabriel late in the first half, and then uh, last weekend some a one in practice, a couple fluky on the ice. Um, uh, nothing too serious. The two Norses, we've got to wait and see. Brady's going to be out for a couple of weeks still more, so we know that. Chase has got an MRI actually going to be today, so we'll know more a little bit about the extent of that. Uh, the rest of them we should get back somewhat shortly, but uh, when they all hit at the same time, it, it, it makes it a little bit more difficult. Just looking at the line charts and four lines, you're down to three centers. How are you going to rotate and deal with that? Yeah, we're, we're really maybe a little shorter than that. we got a couple injured guys playing or at least in the lineup so we'll see how we get them into the game as well but um, you know you just have to do what you have to do we'll, we'll, we'll have to utilize we're, we're complaining about the two minute timeouts being too long standing around by the bench we're going to need them uh, here and uh, we'll get through you know so it's just something you have to deal with like I said uh, injuries you can understand it's when they all hit at once is what we've got to navigate here a little bit better. All right, thanks very much for your time coach. Nice. Back to you. All right, Stacey, we'll look for your reports during the game here tonight on RIT Sports Zone. Tigers were on the road last weekend, and oh, Sports Zone made the trip with them. RIT and AIC at the Mass Mutual Center down in Springfield, Massachusetts. And the Tigers were looking good last Friday night. First period, Gabe Valenzuela finding his way through two defenders. Alex Murray of AIC makes the initial stop, but Eric Brown is there for the rebound and his team leading 12th goal on the year to give RIT the early advantage. Later in the period, Danny Smith behind the net, gonna come up with the strip of Ryan Polin, and he's gonna find Sean Cameron in the slot for the one-timer. RIT had a two nothing lead. Second period, Mike Rotolo making history, an easy save here for his 2,000th of his career as a Tiger, the first to reach that mark in RIT Division I history. The Tigers kept coming at the Yellow Jackets. Adam Brubaker, I mentioned earlier, a big weekend, gave RIT a three-goal lead here with a blast over the glove of Murray and off the crossbar, Brubaker's fifth goal on the year. Then Alex Perone fontaine out of the lineup tonight, played well last weekend at AIC. His first goal on the year right there, the Tigers we're in control. Eric Brown, a big night again. He's leading this team offensively, and he capped off the scoring with a power play goal off the feed from Chase Norris. Mike Rotolo had 18 saves and picked up his fifth career shutout as RIT took game one from AIC five to nothing. The Tigers went for the sweep last Saturday afternoon after an early goal from Ryan Kruper. AIC would get the equalizer thanks to the deflection from Patrick Demel. It was 1-1 to the third. Tigers were down 2-1. Mark Dubiot gets past Brody Vallette here and 
He's going to beat Mike Rotolo just 128 into the third period. The Yellow Jackets had themselves a two-goal edge, but just 30 seconds later, Chase Norrish, the one-timer to cut the lead to one. Norrish's seventh goal on the season. Later in the period, Eric Brown finds Darren Brady, who finds the back of the net to tie the game at three. But RIT would take some penalties, costly penalties, late in the period. And Patrick Demmel makes them pay. Tigers paying for it with his second of the night right there. AIC led 4-3. They would add another on the power play. Blake Christensen scores to seal it for the Yellow Jackets. The Tigers split the series with AIC. They lose 5-3. Well, we played 70 good minutes on the weekend, the first uh, game and the first 10 minutes of tonight. And then after that, we were very soft. How much is that a concern, you know, moving forward? And, and well, you got a concern because, it, you know, this isn't a one-time thing. If it was one time, I can say, hey, you know, whatever. But, uh, you know, we, we don't have a killer instinct right now. And, um, you know, I don't know why that is. We, sh we should be uh, a lot stronger in, uh, when the game is on the line. Uh, uh, we've shown some signs on that, but then we've shown signs when the games get tough that uh, we're not sticking our nose in there and uh, competing hard enough to, to win the game or, or break the game open. Any team in this league is going to be able to, you know, come out and play well against us no matter what night it is. Um, you know, especially when we get the Friday night win, we got to come out even stronger because we know they're going to push back on Saturday night. So, you know, we, we got to come out with the mentality that, you know, each either team could win. So, you know, it's, it is disappointing to lose on, on the Saturday night. They capitalized on what they got, and uh, most of the, most of the time we. Uh, it was the box that got us in trouble a couple of times there. So and they uh, they capitalized on their power play. As simple as that. And we can't uh, we can't be giving that to them. But again, given the credit, they worked for what they got out there. So, coach mentioned to us maybe uh, you guys are lacking the killer instinct uh, in some of these games. Something you would agree with uh, being around this team right now? Yeah, I think uh, we need a little more greediness to our game right now. I think uh, I think that's something that we started out with that maybe we uh, we don't have right now. So that's definitely something that uh, we need to talk about and we need to, I think, capitalize on a lot more as a greediness to the hockey game. Oh, weekend sweeps have been a rarity in Atlantic hockey this season. Out of 41 series, there's only been 14 times a team has earned all four points on the weekend. RIT has three sweeps so far this year. The Tigers have been a different team from game one to game two of weekend series. While they're outscoring opponents in that game one and certainly have a better record to show for themselves, they're being outscored 37 to 31 in the second game and they are giving over up over three goals a game as well. Something they'll want to correct here this weekend. Well, still to come here tonight, a former Tiger shines in his very first All-Star appearance. Plus, speaking of former Tigers, we caught up with former goaltender Jared DeMichael, who's now part of the staff, trying to rebuild a UMass program in College Hockey's premier conference. Our conversation with Jared DeMichael is coming up in just a bit. And this guy right here on the ice, Charles Williams, gave the Tigers fits the last time they squared off. We'll share how Canisius has benefited greatly from Charles Williams' big off-season decision. It's all next. You're watching RIT Sports Zone pre-game live. Back here at RIT Sports Zone pre-game live, it's hockey night in Rochester as the hometown Tigers host conference rival Canisius, the Golden Griffs, looking for two points this evening to pull even in the standings with RIT. And we are nearing the stretch run of the season. Only 11 games remaining, and things are getting tight in Atlantic hockey. The Tigers sitting tied for third with Robert Morris, trailing first place Army by three points, and second place Air Force by two points. Air Force will be here in February. Remember, the top five get the all-important first round by come playoff time. It's going to be interesting over the next few weeks. Well, these two teams faced off earlier this season with Canisius earning the sweep thanks to an outstanding performance from senior goaltender Charles Williams, who stole the show after making incredible 84 saves on the 85 shots he faced in the two games. Williams is a prime example that one team's loss can certainly be another team's game. Charles Williams began his college career at Ferris State, but due to an Achilles injury and limited playing time, he decided to make a change with one year of eligibility remaining. I knew I could compete at this level and um, I, I wanted to get the best opportunity. And not that I didn't see it at Ferris, but I just wanted to see what else was out there. And I just, I, I, I talked with my family and I, and I think that 
we knew that I could have a shot. And even my coach at Ferris felt the same way. And uh, he helped me out, and, and here I am. The Brubaker fires. Ooh. And somehow that was found by Williams. That's what you need. And as a fifth-year senior, we felt that his experience and maturity could help us as we only had two other guys. Um, we knew that he had been a good goalie in junior. We knew that he was a good goalie in college that had been beaten out by great goalies. And he was really just looking for a fresh chance. So when you put all of those things together, we felt it was an easy decision to bring in a person of character who was a good goalie. Canisius has gotten more than they might have bargained for. Williams has been great, ranking among the best in the nation. I'm not surprised now because I see his work ethic, his commitment, his, his, his review, his, uh, his, his coachability, all those things speak to me as he was ready for this and he's capitalized on his opportunities. So I'm not surprised now. I didn't know how good he would be. Again, we knew what the potential was, but every guy in our roster and most rosters come in with a lot of potential. We like them all. So uh, the fact that he has picked it up and run with it is uh, a credit to him. Swings it over. Norris shoots. And again, Williams. As far as the numbers go, that, that's going to change all year. You know, it's, it's, it's uh, like you said, there's a lot of season left still. And uh, with hockey, it's a crazy game. It can go up and go down. So I just want to make sure I'm prepared for every game. And wherever that leads me, then that's great. And if our team accomplishes what we need to, then that's even better. Canisius is in the thick of the Atlantic hockey race, following the lead and exuding the same confidence of the man who's found his groove between the pipes in Buffalo. His I've been there before uh, approach to the game I think really, really helps Jeff Fortman and Josh Kielik, our two other seniors, but helps us in the locker room. So that piece of it has been extremely valuable. We're down to 48 Jeff. seconds remaining in the power play. Big blast again. F. Rebound in front. Turn around. Block shot. Valenzuela. One timer. F. Another block shot. F. Fires. Another block shot. F. Fires. Sends it high. Tigers all sorts of pressure. Valenzuela calling for it. And Williams will Whoa. make the save. The team defense is, has been so consistent and it's allowed me to continue to be consistent because we both have confidence in each other, the defense and the goaltender to the four is all in the D zone. So um, I think that's number one in terms of how um, I've been able to, to, to play consistent because they let me really ease into the game and, and keep that confidence and keep riding high. Well, it has been a tremendous season for grad transfer Charles Williams. He has found a home at Canisius, and his numbers have been solid all year long, ranking 12th nationally in goals against average, second in the nation in save percentage. And with three shutouts, including one against RIT back in November, he is tied for fifth in the country. He mentioned the Canisius D has been clutch in front of him all year long, and they have been getting it done, especially in that series against RIT. It was a frustrating series for the Tigers back in November, and RIT realizes that patience will be key this weekend. Very good defensively, very hard to penetrate and uh, score goals against. Uh, uh, they're very comfortable playing in their own end, so we, we might get a lot of zone time, but it may not be easy to score, so you got to be patient when you play them, and and not just be running gun and then give up the goal. So uh, we got to do a good job there. We definitely had a little bit of trouble with them. I think we only scored one goal on the whole weekend. So I think it's going to be one of those games where we have to keep everything simple. You know, get the pucks to the net, bodies to the net, create a little bit of commotion in front of the net, and you know, hope hope the bounces go our way. And you know, just like I said, dig deep and go for it. Yeah, the Tigers will need to dig deep tonight, especially knowing how shorthanded they will be due to injuries. We bring in the guys who will have the call for us at the top of the hour, Gene Battaglia and John DiTullio. Good evening, guys. Good evening, Kevin. Glad we're with us tonight here on Time Warner. And, uh, you know, the funny thing, John, is Charles Williams mentioned this. The game of hockey, things can change like that. Charles Williams up to this point has been fantastic. All the Tigers need to do is work a little bit here and get the puck on the net. They're going to have, talking with Wayne this week, pucks and people to the net. they got to create a lot of opportunities, create a lot of traffic, and it's going to take a greasy goal to solve one of the best goalies in the country. Well, for the Tigers here tonight, they're going to be shorthanded, as Kevin mentioned earlier, just rolling out the three lines tonight. With that, John, you need your top line to perform. Eric Brown, the leading scorer for this team. Who has been really sensational uh, this season, really picking up the slack. When you look at Eric Brown, uh, tied for 17th in the country, 13 goals and uh, eight assists. And Dylan McLaughlin, who anchors that top line, two goals in their uh, three-point weekend 
last Saturday out in Colorado, Friday and Saturday versus Air Force. Dylan McLaughlin, a sophomore to keep your eye on him with that top line. Yeah, he centers that, uh, he's on the left wing with yep. Schmelzer on the center of that line. So for the Tigers, as we mentioned, Brown and Valenzuela, three lines tonight, John, but for the Tigers, whenever they're pre presented a challenge like this, and I go back to last sure. year, where they had to go with Nick Amato. Nick <laughs> Amato, who was a club goalie and came up. The Tigers played some of their best team hockey, so here is a little taste of adversity yeah, tonight. they've been through this, and you mentioned a club goalie last year that picked up two big wins. All RIT wants to do at the end of the year is to get that first round by, and, there you, and Eric Brown will be key tonight. 13 goals, 8 assists. So far, has set career highs in goals and assists. Not only Brown, Caleb Cameron, some of your leaders like Miles Powell, they're going to really have to lead the charge in getting pucks on Charles Williams tonight. Well, Charles Williams, certainly one of the keys tonight for yep. the RIT Tigers, how to solve him. He is incredible. Pucks, uh, patience, and poise right out of the gate. When you, Kanisha's defense sub, sets up their offense, so the Tigers have got to take care of the puck. First and foremost, how about Kanisha's? In league play, when they score first, they're 7 and 0. Oh. And then we talked about William, Charles Williams, well, it's Williams Wall, second in save percentage in the country. However, RIT is fifth in the country in terms of shots on goal, 35.1. Who wins that tonight? That will determine who gets the two points. It's the front end of the home and home. Here at the Palacini tonight, Kevin, and you look at the standings, and I know Wayne Wilson said, oh, it's too soon. No, no, no. <laughs> Canisius in fifth, the Tigers tied for third. It's that time you start looking at those things. Only 11 games remaining. It should be interesting. Guys, we'll look for you at the top of the hour. Well, still to come on the program from the Frozen Four to the pros to college coaching. It's been a wild ride for one Tiger alum. We'll hear from him next. This is RIT Sports Zone pregame live. Welcome back to the Gene Policini Center on the campus of the Rochester Institute of Technology where classes get back in session on Monday. The spring semester is set to begin, but tonight the focus is on the ice as the Tigers face off with Canisius. Well, the 2010 Frozen Four team will always have a special place in the hearts of Tiger Nation. That includes former goaltender Jared DeMichael, who was a big reason why the Tigers crashed the party in Motown. While DeMichael's playing days are now behind him, he says his current career can be credited to the man who's been leading the Tigers these last 18 years. Jared DeMichael will forever be linked to one of the biggest sports moments in RIT history. The Cinderella story of the tournament so far, the Rochester Institute of Technology out of Rochester, New York. They're going dancing to the Frozen Four in Detroit. It's crazy that it was seven years ago. Like, I mean, it feels like it was just yesterday and um, still very close with basically every single player on that team. And now, obviously, we're a little bit older. We're, we're getting married or guys are having kids. So a lot of us are maybe getting a little bit chubbier, too. But uh, we definitely had a lot of things fall our way. But I think the, the biggest thing that I learned was just our team work ethic. And we were a team, like, everyone cared for each other and no one cared who was scoring the goal or making the save or blocking the shot. Every time everybody went on the ice, everyone was their biggest cheerleader and rooting for each other. And um, it didn't matter who was hopping over the boards. Like you knew what every single guy was gonna do on the ice and you were excited for each other. And um, it was definitely a special time. After that magical season, DeMichael elected to go pro, but quickly realized a long-term career wasn't going to happen. When did you realize that, you know, maybe this isn't going to be a career that I can sustain long term? For me, like, it was, it was a great experience. I'm happy I did it. Um, it was important for me as a hockey player. Like, it was always a goal of mine. I wanted to play professional hockey no matter the level. And um, it just wasn't the, the same camaraderie and just didn't have the same passion for the game as a player as that, what I thought I was going to have. And I figured I should do something else and maybe have a career in something else because I knew it in hockey, just because of my age and the way things were going, I, I wasn't going to have a long standing career. And, so DeMichael turned to coaching, thanks to his former coach. A big reason I got into coaching was, was Wayne Wilson, the relationship that I had with him, a player, and um, saw the positive effect that he had on me and kind of want to have that same effect on uh, players that I'm coaching. In the so far, coaching has panned out. DeMichael was a part of the RIT Women's Division Three National Championship team, an assistant at Division Three startup Nazareth, and after two years at St. Lawrence, DeMichael has now ended up on the staff 
at UMass. I'm one of our two assistant coaches here. Um, big pieces of my job are, are probably recruiting. I'm on the road a good amount. I also work with our goalies and I oversee our penalty kill unit. I really try to be honest with the players and show them the positives and negatives and um, whether it be showing them film or doing things before and after practice. Obviously as a player I, I was once in their shoes and knew what it was like and I felt like for me it, I, I enjoyed honesty from the coaching staff and that's something I learned from Wayne Wilson. He, he was going to be hard on you from time to time but he was always going to be honest with you and as a player like it allowed you to have a free mind and you're open-minded about things and I think when, when someone's honest with you you'll, you'll do anything for them. Can you see yourself wanting to be or, or being a head coach uh, in, in the college level at some point? It, it's definitely a goal of mine to, to one day be a head coach. I think I need to continue to grow as a coach and as a person, and um, I'm still learning, but I think every head coach is, is probably still learning whether they're 70 years old or, or 30 years old, um, but that's definitely a goal of mine, just like as a player, whether it's a goal to, to win a lot of games or score a bunch of goals. Um, I, I want to be a head coach one day and, and, and be able to run a program program and um, hopefully one day I'm, I'm lucky enough to have that opportunity. Yeah, we certainly wish Jared the best of luck at UMass. They'll have their hands full tonight. They're at number 10 Boston College. Good luck to him. Meanwhile, other former Tigers, all oh, they're making RIT proud as well. How about Matt Garbowski? On Wednesday night, Matt Garbowski made his first appearance in the ECHL All-Star Game in Glens Falls. Garbowski, a member of the Colorado Eagles, scored twice and added two assists on the night en route to MVP honors. Garb Garbowski, who's in his second pro season, has 18 goals and 17 assists in 38 games this season. Well, we're closing in on game time here at the Policini Center. We'll get you back upstairs to John and Gene next. This is RIT Sports Zone pregame live. And we're back on RIT Sports Zone pregame live. RIT and Canisius have taken the ice, and Rocky Parada getting the starting lineup set in mere moments from now. And if you're just joining us, it is all hands on deck here tonight for the RIT Tigers. The lineup a whole lot different than it has been all season long. RIT will be without Chase and Brady Norris on the defensive side of things, while forwards Todd Skirving, Ryan Kruper, Max Mikowski, and Alex Perone Fontaine are all sidelined as well. Speaking of Skirving, earlier this week, Skirving and the Tigers delivered teddy bears from December's Teddy Toss to Rochester's Regional Health's Children's Unit. Skirving, by the way, is one of 15 nominated for College Hockey's Humanitarian Award. Finalists will be announced in February, and the winner will be recognized at this year's Frozen Four in Chicago. Best of luck to Todd for all the great work he does here in our community. Well, you still have plenty of time to get out to a game before the season is over. Individual tickets are available for RIT men's and women's hockey by visiting the Policini Center box office by calling 475-412 on or online at rithockey.com. Just a reminder, we're back with you one week from tonight when the Tigers host Bentley for a weekend series here at the Policini Center. Our coverage begins at 6.30 on Friday and Saturday with RIT Sports Zone pregame live. That'll do it for us. John, Gene, and Stacy are next. RIT Sports Zone Live begins now.